Hello. Um, my name is Philip. And my name is Evelyn. And we are the Sozis. Welcome to our love story. You asked me out and then you told me right after you asked me out that I mm. didn't want to go back knowing before asking you out. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For her it felt like that to me it's because she had been waiting over a month to talk to me. So <laughs> do I give you money? Of course. <laughs> Run for your life. <laughs> Please cut that out. <laughs> um, she can tell that story. <laughs> um we met on Twitter. Yeah, we met on, on Twitter and it was uh it was because of, of farming you know um on twitter there's there's so much you can do there's so many people you can connect with so as a farmer as farmers we we connected on twitter someone sent me his profile in my dms because of the the things that i was posting the content that i was putting out on the farm i mean what i was doing on my farm and uh, he told me that yeah i think you can learn something from from him so it around it took me like uh, i think a month to settle and then uh send him a a a, a twitter message a dm yeah <laughs> a dm so i sent him a dm and then yeah he replied in like in like 30 minutes or like or less <laughs> I don't remember that part. I don't think I, I replied in 30 minutes because... <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would take so long to reply because his work looked like it was eh, so busy. So when I, when, I, when I sent him the text, I put the phone then, started to do my other things and then I just had, you know, a notification and I was like, what? Wait, he has already replied. You yes, see, it so was not 30 minutes because you guys, you know, um, if a girl texts you, don't text right away. <laughs> Give it some hours. Keep her waiting. You know, build that tension. So that's what I did. For her, it felt like 30 minutes because she had been waiting over a month to talk to me. So... <laughs> okay, that sounds cocky, but... <laughs> but it, it, it's the truth. Um, uh, I, think, I think that pretty much sums it up, right? I used to post my farming work so that I encourage more young people, um, people who um, lived abroad and have moved back. You can do farming. Your parents have land that is just seated there. You can do farming. So that's the reason I started uh, posting some of my work. And uh, that time, uh, I'm based mainly in sugarcane, but we had said to diversify and I had planted some acres of, of tomatoes, which she was doing as well. So she reached out for um to learn more and uh, we've been talking since that day work moved into other things yeah now we're here mm, now we're here uh, i don't know so <laughs> that's a funny question because um when we started to talk on twitter it took us around i think two weeks to meet in person because he he used to stay at the farm mostly in Nakasongola. So when he when he came back for the weekend, um, we met on a Sunday. Yes, we met on a Sunday, and we we it wasn't just us; it was him and I and Hilary. Yes, we were going to talk about mostly what we were talking about in our Twitter DMs. So we met on on Sunday. And then six days after, he asked me out. Keep in mind, he was supposed to have gone back to Nakasongola on, on Wednesday that week. But he stayed till Saturday. And then he, he took me out and asked me out properly. Properly. You know. And, um, that baby. It was not six days after. It was like six days. Mm -hmm. It was not. Sunday. We met some weekends and then I asked you out. No. It was like two weeks. Yes. <laughs> I went back. I went back. I came back. Oh, you didn't go. 
you asked me out and then you told me right after you asked me out that I didn't mm. want to go back no before asking you out mm. okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was um that was June June so we got married in September this year so that was a year and how many months two before we got married a year and two months right three i don't remember the exact date but uh, i have it somewhere in my pictures but it was uh, i think may mm-hmm. yes may i think 7th i remember that date coincidentally is the date um, we started talking I don't know whether it was 17th or 7th, one of the 7s. Um, yes, that's when it happened. Um, you want details? <laughs> so, um, I, I come from a very um, Christian home. My parents are ministers in church. And uh, um, she, she was... She found that very intriguing and she, she, well at home we pray a lot and there's a lot of different functions happening. Today there'll be a fellowship, tomorrow marriage fellowship, something like that. So that day um, I, I deceived her that we were having uh, an auntie's prayer fellowship, all my aunties were going to be there, it was an annual thing. So she was on pressure. I did that so she could dress up and really look good. I told her it's going to be only these rich aunties, people of high status, so you better look the part. <laughs> so Lambi, she was on pressure the whole day. You know, I even almost told her exactly what to wear because it's a dress of hers that I liked. So, but in the background, I was planning all these things and uh, yeah. Um, my sister brought her in. I had set something small and uh, some lights, and I wanted it to make. I wanted it to be special, guys. If you're proposing to a girl, it's a special time for them. It's a special moment. Don't take it for granted, because it's it. It's also a special moment for you because these things don't happen every time. And even when it happens the first time, it will never be as special. So invest. Put some little money, even if there's no money. Look for small, small things, but make it special. And always listen to your girl. One thing that I picked from her earlier in the relationship was that she always wanted her parents to be there when she got proposed to. So I, the day, I think three days before the proposal, I, I asked for a meeting with them. I went, told them my um, mission, asked for her hand in marriage. Her parents approved. They were excited, they cleared their schedules. It was, I think I met them on, on Monday, we were, I was proposing on Thursday. Yes, so we, we did that and uh, it turned out great. My parents were also honored. I did it from home, I didn't even spend on a hotel, I just spent on a caterer and a decorator. But it was a beautiful experience. I would not um, have done it any other way. What I love about him, is the very very first thing is that he is god fearing and not just the normal god fearing that everyone you know keeps saying that oh yeah he's so god fearing no 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 <laughs> but um he is what you'd call the god fearing man like he's not afraid to be vulnerable before god he is one who is intention about working on his relationship with God each and every day and he you know he's the I mean just like he is the actual priest of the house and for me that that that's that's something like you it's just yeah I love it I love it about him because it also motivates me to keep on working on myself as a Christian intentionally working on my relationship with God 
the other thing that i love about him is that um he's extremely caring and it's not like uh i don't know how to put it but i'll put it this way we literally live here just the two of us but i don't feel overwhelmed at all yes that's how i can bring it out. that's the best way i can bring it out yeah and i mean he's he's so loving i mean i think he gets all these things from being a very good caring person because the the things that i love most about him are those fruits that you would get from the holy spirit because of his intentional work on you know loving god and seeking him more you know god continue to continues to pour into his cup so there are things that we just the parts of him that you see you know day by day and you're like wait there's also this like hey the cup is overflowing yes uh, wow <laughs> them let's continue <laughs> so um now what i love about her uh, when i when i met her at the time i had just said i'm done dating i'm done just having uh, these short short relationships that were not uh, going anywhere this, you know um they, it just wasn't working so i said let me focus on on the farm let me focus on my projects let me focus on making money and uh, and my growth in christ because many times being pastor's children you follow what your parents are doing and you forget that you have to have a relationship with god on your own so the older you get the more um the more you transition the more you understand that um it's it's something that is inevitable god the holy spirit is always there he's always searching and running after us even he says it in his word so um in that time i was seeking and praying and i just said god i'm done with this let me just focus on uh, um working and uh, growing in you so when i met her i i saw this light in my spirit this light in her before i even knew about her family and all that i saw something in her that just wasn't uh, normal um and god was just drawing me into um using me in her life that's how it started and uh that light just grew and i still see it she's uh, the light even for this house in so many ways um she she comes me so well so she knows how to get on my nerves but then she knows how to calm me in an instant um so i love that that uh first of all it was it was god given if it's not from god then it's not for for you so you have to search and ask god whether it really is from from him so that's the first one the second one is that she, yes she's also god fearing and i mean we're not perfect people we've 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 gone through life we've we've done it all we you know there's there's always grace for you there's always um you can wake up tomorrow and be a completely different person that's what it means to be born again so for us we are not perfect beings but we are very progressive every day we try to draw closer and closer to god and uh, while we on that note please you it's 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 life the word of god is life it's uh it is everything yes Yes, the way the truth and the light. So that was a big point for me. I loved I always prayed for a calm woman. I didn't want a woman who I go with somewhere and she just starts blabbering all over the place. I didn't like that because um I I just I just loved ladies who are calm and collected, who are poised when they start to speak, they speak well, they speak and command authority and respect. So that was a very big point for me. aside from being a good fear and then she's she's for me she's the most beautiful woman on earth i don't know about any other person but for me that's that's how i feel and uh well the rest just kept coming in but men 
it's not cliche, it's not bougie to have a checklist. Write down the things that you want, pray for them. It's not just for women because it's, on, it's not only women who get life partners. We are also in this forever. So you need to know exactly what you want. If, if, if scent is very important to you, put it up there. If it's a non-negotiable, that if this girl does not smell good all the time, it's a non-negotiable, it's a deal breaker. You know, nothing is too small. And when you get married, you realize nothing is too small. It can become big in an instant. So I feel like I've talked too much, but <laughs> what I'm saying, um, make non-negotiables negotiables it's okay for men to do it it's imperative that you do it it's for the betterment of marriage as a as a, as a institution and the growth of family which is what christ ordained for us um yes but all in all i love how with uh, she's perfect with a slight imperfection and i'm grateful to god every day for you because I get to love you by well. Um, my good friend Ryan was in charge of the music. Must have been on the it. It's a beautiful song. It's a good first dance song. Mm-hmm. So, um, what what I loved the most during the wedding preparation was. Um, the unity. There's a way. There's a way a wedding brings together like family and your friends, and it's like you. It's not. It's not like you're even looking, but they're coming to you. You know, they're coming to you for, you know, for anything. They're like, if you want anything, you know, tell me. Tell me what you need. I remember having some of my cousins who I didn't even talk to in a while all coming out hey eve uh uh-huh so what do you want me to help you with what would you want me to do um how can i help you know different people your uncles your aunties your whole family is just coming together your siblings so many people are you know they just come together to make sure that you know the day the day goes on and yeah for me that's one of the things i really really enjoyed Actually, it's the thing that I enjoyed the most out of the whole thing. It's just that, I mean, just bringing people, just bringing people together for me, it was, it was, yeah, it was the best. What I enjoyed the most about the preparations as well was uh, the love, the the unity, and uh, seeing people come together and treating you like. Mongolia even before you walk down the aisle um, people came through in a big big way people people showed love people showed the value that we hold in their lives um, that's something that I'll never take for granted and it was also a reminder of making good friends make good friends they might be few but make true friendships it's a uh, those people who are your people, they come through in big ways. Some might not even have money, but they'll give you their time. They'll do everything. They'll carry stuff. They'll move in the rain. They'll, they'll just be there for you. And that's what you need the most. So I think that's, uh, that's what I enjoyed the most. Otherwise, it's not the most fun <laughs> time. At least not for us guys. <laughs> and most especially if you... <laughs> You have some OCD and you pay attention to detail. You have to give up a lot of control, which I also loved because I realized I don't have to always be. It way it came out pretty pretty decent. It was a perfect wedding. Yeah, we're grateful to God. But yes, the love was key, was major. Oh, I would have gotten a bigger tent. I would have gotten a skyline tent. <laughs> People told me you're going to ban the guests. I was like, I'm going to ban them, but that is the tent I saw in my dreams, the one I want. <laughs> and God told me, <laughs> stick to your decision. But I al- allowed these earthly beings to confuse <laughs> my head. That day we had rain, it was cool. Jeff, you remember? It was cool. There was like, people would have sweated for like 20 minutes or 30 minutes, and it would all be good. But also, um, 
having done the function at my parents' farm and uh, where the church is, um, people, <laughs> people overwhelmed us. Guys just came through. There are people who came for the wedding and they were like, for us, even if there's no invite for us, we don't care about COVID. Even if we don't eat, but we have to attend your wedding. Yeah. So I wish I had invited more people. I was very um, restricted. I knew the wedding is for my parents. It's, 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 you know, their priority. So I didn't overstretch numbers. In fact, I, there are many people that I didn't invite and I feel so bad. And if you're watching this, man, <laughs> I'm really <laughs> sorry, but I would have loved to have many more people. The second thing, write a speech and stick to it. Write a speech. Um, I, I got so emotional, I got through off and I didn't say all the things that I wanted to say. I mean, I still had a very nice speech, a decent speech at least from what um, I, I, I made a lot of, uh, I gave a lot of pointers that I had noted down, but I wish I had made a more elaborate speech, even if I was just reading it off the phone. So, grooms, um, grooms out there, write a speech, write a very good speech and just get it out from your heart. Yes, that's, that's the only thing I would do otherwise. Everything was perfect, the rest of it was perfect. If you're out there and you want to save on cars, motor kid, me I wanted to save on that, those cars, but those cars made my day. Just seeing them, because for us men, we still stay boys down there, you know? seeing those cars and just seeing how it was it was cool it was it added a fun thing to the wedding so don't minimize try to get the best deal but blast on cars it's your day <laughs> yeah something you'd redo um <clears throat> let me see i think the only thing i would redo is the DJ. <laughs> Yeah, the rest of the rest of the things for me were perfect. <laughs> Everything else was just perfect. Everything was okay. The only thing I'll redo is the DJ, and that's it. But we won't mention his name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I think oh, my funniest moment of the wedding is uh, walking down the. <laughs> you know those decorations they have a will just dust just comes down but <laughs> yes for me uh, my fondest moment was also walking down the aisle um having both my parents just walk me down it was it was uh, it was significant and at the time i felt like how walking down the aisle was the most significant but with time, it still had its strong significance because that's the the main celebration. But uh, my parents walking me down the aisle just, it's like now you're off, you're a man, you're starting your own homestead, you're starting your own family, you're growing the lineage. We've set you on your own path. That was, it was emotional. I pray that uh, everyone gets to take that moment in and appreciate it. Yes. And, and just another point is that every small moment, just take it in. Yeah. Take it in because the day goes so fast, you guys. We plan for a wedding, you plan, you do this. I but it goes, good. it goes you're like, hey, it was, it was 10 a.m. Now it's, it's 4, 5. Before you know it, guys, you're the ones giving a speech. <laughs> and the function is done. Yeah, and one other thing is to just, whatever you can't change, just let it be. That's yes. just how it's going to be. Yes. I think that's one of the things that gave me the most peace on our wedding. So I, said, I, I trained myself way, way earlier that whatever I can't change and it has already happened, it has happened and there's nothing I can do about it. True. So the only thing I can change is what's coming after. How I'm going to react towards it, how, you know, what I'll do better later, you know. Whatever doesn't go well, 
you've done your best and yeah for you you might think it it's not the you know like the way they say um you know. god works everything <laughs> for for the good of us so you might it's just like how you can say that how how we know that when god says no to you it's still good to you so even on that day when things don't go well when things don't go your way they have still they have still gone well according to god's will so you just let it be and let it go actually marriage marriage is not for us marriage is yeah. for god so you just know that it's god's thing you're doing it for god you're doing it to honor god you're not even doing it to honor your family you're not even doing it for even the love that takes us to the altar it is love that is it's that conviction from the holy spirit it's not just love don't be fooled you know <laughs> marriage is from god so if you have that attitude that no matter what i'm doing this for god whether that falls down while walking down the aisle you're still going to put a ring on her finger you're still going to give god the glory yeah i mean yes. therefore man shall leave his mother and father hmm. god's will one word that I'll just to describe marriage now is uh love love in its full detail yeah um i'll refer you to first corinthians 13 verse 4 the one that talks about love love is patient love is kind love is you know slow to anger all that not boastful you know that's the word i used to describe marriage love because it's all those things all those things make marriage patience kindness humility all that i i think i couldn't agree anymore um um the lord that we our faith is the faith of perfect love so perfect love entails so many things and the scripture to go to is yes um first corinthians 13 actually you can read the whole chapter it it uh it puts love in two more perspective actually it is the real definition of love first leave google <laughs> that is the real definition of love yeah. and uh um one thing i've learned is <clears throat> most of it is from is not to keep not to not to take things to personal and to learn to adjust and when you get married you think you know this person 100% but you don't you know maybe 50% but when you start to spend your waking times with them your sleeping time with them and your every other time with them a lot of things um expose sounds like a strong word but a lot of things are discovered and if you don't have patience and understanding that i mean this for the long run something small can become something big and it can tear you apart so it's something that um i've learned it's something that i have really um taken up and be aware be aware that this is a whole new thing it's a whole new dimension of your life it's a new season It's a time for you to grow as different muscles. You have to grow the muscle of patience, of forgiveness, of uh, tolerance. You know, all these things that um are going to make you or make your marriage a beautiful thing and one that um is enjoyable and one that people look up to. Yes. And and knowing that I mean this for this is it. I have no yeah. no way out i'm doing this for the long run god is going to sustain us and is going to um enrich our marriage and of course make sure you have an altar at home because without god you guys you cannot handle marriage you cannot most especially for us guys and the way social media is uh, all over the place um you know we come from our past with all these things so if you don't have god to help you and to speak to you and guide you it's going to be tough but yes love is key a wedding is very planned but i planned my wedding we planned our wedding in uh, 
in one month because of covid and everything was up and down we did it in one month but you can only pull that off if you have professional people people who understand the value and the virtue of excellence and quality so be very very careful um, one thing that i've learned from one of my mentors is that you spend more so that the outcome is more predictable you spend for value you spend for pre- predictab- pre- pre- eh? predictability predictability but you might want to save too much and then get you know quack services so um first of all of course mr semakula jeffrey uh, the main man behind the camera and his entire crew they did a great job um highly highly recommend um um they 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 did they did their best and they were smart um they didn't embarrass us in any way or yeah they were, it, they were just uh, um they were pleasant to work with um decoration show time events madam jamelia she was lovely she was good uh, flexible and uh you can just trust her with everything yeah. and and she'll 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 do her best to pull off what you want food um omuka restaurant they did a wonderful job we had um overwhelming numbers but they had the capacity to adjust and satisfy all those numbers um which other food which other vendors um larry kajo did my suit he was he also did a good job um that's oh and and uh and the cars harold harold's rides those guys were good they were on time they were professional the cars were extremely clean the drivers were presentable so th- that's uh, that that that's also highly recommendable um that's that's about it i think the tent oh my god the tent the tent the tent to the mainest the baddest in the game the guys who will never disappoint you ever 100% 100% 110 120 150% okay this is also personal but <laughs> those guys will deliver 110%. So um we we are just grateful. These guys everyone worked their best for our wedding and we are happy. We we can't take away anything from our wedding. We are just grateful. Yeah, events limited were so professional and um I don't so like to appreciate the people that did my makeup. Um faith faith umuhoza and also faith fresh yeah the boss the boss did a very very good job they did a great job if you don't want your wife to look like someone else on your wedding those are those are your people <laughs> those are your people to run to i mean they 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 listen to exactly what you want and they do exactly what you want and they're not people going to force you to do what you don't want to do so yeah Mm. And um oh shout out to Ziwa who was on time that team is man that team is I think yeah, they were I think that team too. has like the best customer care so this, I'd really like to shout out to the Ziwa yeah team. Pair, pair by Ziwa team those guys have the best customer service mm. better than any institution here in Uganda okay yeah better than yeah any any company here like they like they like yeah. this with java you know? <laughs> so because i mean those guys are so kind it's not a sal- and not and a they'll they'll move you, even I'm exactly sorry. it's not mm. a salon where you feel like you've entered a, a salon it's like there's you know, value for your, your home it's like your home everyone is just you know how are you are you okay can i get you some water are you good okay come we're going to the dryer we're going to do this and you know when they come to your location they are on time the conversation is good they're not gossiping you know it's just they're the i think they're the best team to work with in terms of of your hair mm, and you you'll get a clean cut ziwa ziwa was was perfect yeah, yeah impeccable 
yeah. his team um, I've, I've forgotten my friend's name but very mobile those guys came through very early in the morning for my uh, groomsmen some of them were not looking as sharp as they should have looked mm. guy jumped on a judge came yeah Yes, at Gonza. Special shout out to at Gonza. Omnyoro. <laughs> yeah, at Gonza did a great job and he was just pleasant to work with. Mm. Yes. Yeah, and um, who else? Oh yeah, dinner events who you know um, helped me out with uh, with the gown and modifying it, and also um, this lady she's called Fifi. I think her store is called Honest. She uh, she also helped me out with adjusting on one of my gowns. The very very first gown, she's the one who adjusted it, and it was just perfect. And she did it in a day because I gave it to her on I gave it to her on Wednesday, and she brought it to me on Friday. Yes, she brought it to me on Friday, dry cleaned and done. And yet she had to redo the whole thing. So yes, and. Um, Oh yeah, the, the guys who did the deco for 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 the traditional wedding, simplex simplex SF SF events, yeah, SF events. Those guys are just perfect. Like, yeah, they're just perfect. I I didn't really, apart from showing them what I wanted, the rest was just them, and that was just it. Like, yeah, that was just it. And just to throw it out there, our budget wasn't ridiculous. It, actually, it wasn't, wasn't for ridiculous at all. It wasn't. It wasn't too low and yet not too high. And I think um, everyone who came to the wedding appreciated at least one. Even if you live when you've appreciated one thing, it's fine. That means they, you know, the team worked. Yeah. So, so yeah. If you're looking for something that. Uh, is not too extravagant, something that is not too busy. Um, we, we like to just keep a simple and um, calm profile, elegant. You can you can refer to our wedding. Yeah. yeah. Um, all the information will be done in the description. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching the Sozi's love story. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to Makula's channel for more stories like this, more inspiring stories like this. Thank you for your time. <laughs> yeah, thank you for your time. <laughs>